history in the making. Healing to be awakened. Yeah, you are the star of your story at Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. You know, my son is born on a Wednesday. Seen and felt because they are the largest group. Mm. And so my you, we got your back. No, we're not perfect. And, um... So now you know it's time to grow at Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. Let the healing begin. Greetings, my earthly family, and welcome to another session of Let's Talk and Grow with Miss Rushumba. First, you know, I must do it like I always do. I must give thanks to the Almighty that give us the opportunity to have life and to do our part while in the living. As well as, uh, you know, I have a special guest today, and I'm going to come back and elaborate on that in a moment. But let's go to our ritual. Uh, I give honor to my dearly departed ancestral friend, Mr. Early Laverne. He was a poet, a confidant, and now an inspiration for this show. We all have a story to be told. But so many has never been able to share it. Oftentimes it's because we see that maybe it's not valuable. You know, we just think, you know, we're here and we're just going to get through the best we can. But our stories are valuable, especially after we're gone. So I keep him alive through this show. He was a poet. And as most of you know it, you know, he shared his poems with me. So this show, I always begin with one of his poems. And so the poem that I'm going to be sharing today is called Harm to Our People is Not Meant to Last. So here we go. Harm to our people isn't made to last. Here before you is a blast from the past. Harm to our people isn't made to last. We have experienced a harsh revelation, yet we have excelled toward great elevation. Many of us witnessed torture and death. We suffered many graven defects. Nonetheless, the sun comes shining through. Virtuously speaking, this is an honest truth. We're destined to reach perfection. The strong will, the strong will to live are our, our protection. Among ourselves, we shall not assert any neglection. Within our charge is the true resurrection. Life and liberty have always been yours, even from the homeland out to a distant shores. This powerful knowledge you can't afford to ignore. Of course, you have been told that over a thousand times or more. Being born black have granted to us a powerful mind. We must consistently teach not to be spiritually and mentally blind. Take your progress slow. Do not move too fast. Harm to our people isn't meant to last. Asheo, asheo. Well, I see, for those that are watching and have watched me since I've been doing this, uh, in began March 2022, I bet you've never seen me on a stage like this before, huh? Cameras all in my face, huh? Illuminating the beauty in me, the knowledge in me. So I'm going to tell you why in a moment. <laughs> yeah, I have two wonderful guests today. But you know how I do it. First, I'm going to give you an intro. And uh, so here we go. My guests today are icons. Simply because they are the medium in which Sacramento's longest black-owned newspaper, the Sacramento Observer, has used 
for their eyes and ears to the documentation of the richness of that daily paper. The Sacrament Observer has been around since Thanksgiving 1962. The founder, the late Dr. William H. Lee, has championed the unseen difficulties that comes with doing progressive things such as bringing forth this news and story of a people in the Sacramento region. So to tell the stories that were important to African American communities through the weekly newspaper was no easy feat. If you think about the 60s and what that represented to the community and the world as a whole, America. <laughs> and as time goes on, so do founders. So that is why we have the son now, Larry Lee, now carrying forward the legacy of his father's special vi uh, vision that boasts winning accolades. Now that we have the backdrop to the set in the scenery, I want to introduce to you two very important men that are the heroes that are often unseen and unheard of in the voices of the stories that they skillfully capture. And often and under extreme time constraint and pressure, they land the right picture and tell the tale for his historical newspaper. I with humility of the seasons now going fast and those that are not gone, introduce to you two of the cameramen behind the photos. I start with Mr. Larry Dalton. Mr. Larry Dalton, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You spent about 31 years with the news uh, paper. 31, would 30, you say? No, 35. 35. And so we have Mr. Larry Dalton, and then we have Mr. Robert Maryland. And he too, well, he, I think he's been with them, what, over 40 years? Uh, about 41 years. 41 years. Yeah, 40, 41 years. So ladies and gentlemen, you could see them now, because not oftentimes they're behind the scene, you know, and behind the scene people oftentimes don't want to be seen up front. So. I'm not going to say it was very hard to get him here because I think the timing was right. So welcome to Let's Talk and Grow with Ms. Rushumba. I appreciate you making time so we could celebrate you both. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, this show is about highlighting people's story. And, you know, and I think, I'm sure you have one. Uh, please don't, don't say you don't, because, uh, you know, you've captured pictures that are timeless, that will mark way into, long after you're gone, it will tell the tale that you've been here. True. So, um, I want to ask you, to capture and captivate your audience with pictures is not easy, like I said. So I'm going to begin by asking you to speak of your beginning in such a field as a photography. What made you choose it? Let's start with you, Mr. Dalton. Uh, brother, are you ready me call you Mr. or just Larry? Larry's a good one. Larry's good. <laughs> <laughs> My mom always yeah. said to me, you know, be polite, you know, be respectful. Because if you don't, sometimes people would just call you girl or boy. Or for the women, you guys. <laughs> I hate that. But uh, anyway, so Larry, tell me, what made you decide? Is, did you grow up loving photography work and photos? And was that something that you dreamt of as a young person growing up? Or was it by accident that you stepped into it? Tell you know, me. I think I just got interested in, in uh, uh, being able to use a camera. Um, before I hit my teen years, I told my mom I wanted a camera, and she bought one for my, as a Christmas present for me. Okay. And so I got where I was shooting, you know, didn't know what I was doing, but just shooting stuff. And okay. I did it for a couple of years, and then uh, we left the States and moved to Japan, and, and at that time I had stopped shooting it. Once we got in Japan, Japan was a place where they had, they were, you know, creating cameras and stuff all the time, so I ended up buying, getting another camera, and okay. just became a hobby. Okay, so you picked a, it up as a hobby. Yeah, and it was just a very interesting, you know, to, to be able to have a machine to take pictures and then see the pictures afterwards. 
Okay. So that's what it was. It was so, just an interest in seeing what I could get okay. by having a camera. So. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And you took it into a career. Yeah. You know, it's a great place to start uh, loving, you know, photos. Because we know Japanese make some of the best cameras. <laughs> Did you get one of those Japanese-made cameras? Or was it a Nikon you started off with? Or no, it was, that was Just later. a basic Kodak? Yeah, I think I started off with, I started off with an American camera. <laughs> Had a Kodak camera. Oh, yeah. oh, That's all uh, we could afford. I wouldn't even have said that on video. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And how about you, uh, Mr. Well, Marilyn? Tell me, what, what was it that got you into the photo world of, of documenting and telling the story behind the Capturing all that history? Well, uh, I guess my uncle inspired me. Um, he had a dark room at my grandmother's house back in the days, back in the late 70s, okay. and um, I didn't know what he was doing. You know, he had a dark room, you know, self-made dark, like, like we all had. And um, I don't know, I, I always want to work on those fancy cameras with all the numbers and buttons. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it meant either at the mm -hmm. time. So my uncle let me, he loaned me his camera, and I started shooting and mm. started learning the was, art of photography. It wasn't a Kodak, obviously. No, no, he had a, I think it was a, oh, what was that? Pentex, okay. I think it was a Pentex, it was okay. a very basic, probably a K1000, <laughs> okay. but um, yeah, it was a basic camera, you know, it had a 50 millimeter lens, and, and again, I wanted to learn about all the numbers, what, what does that mean, yeah, and now that I learned everything, I was, you know, measuring distance, right. shutter speeds, and all that. So, so yeah. did you follow up by going to school to perfect it, or you just shadowed your uncle? Well, no, no, no. My uncle, he was a Marine, so he was always gone, really. Okay. He, he was gone. He just had a dark room, and we got in there, and took pictures of each other, just goofing around, me and my cousins, and, um... So and that just basically sparked your interest towards yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, capturing time. You know, okay. Capturing time, really. Okay. But, um, I, I don't recall your question. You, just, you said, how do I get into the, the study of, of photography, you're, mm -hmm, you're asking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, once these sparked your interest, did you go on to school and learn it there, or...? Well, I got started in um, high school. I was going to a certain um, high school, and it was just so large, mm -hmm. and I was really uncomfortable with that. And my auntie, she was expecting my um, cousin, and she told me about this photography program at this one high school I went to. It was like a private school, really. And I said, well, why not? So I got, got in there, and um, I was the only student in the, in the classroom. So you were the only student, only student in the it was a continuation school, excuse me. Okay. And, um, you know, I mean, everybody was like, why are you there? I was there to study photography. I mean, open doors. So you me. weren't a bad boy while you no, were there. No, you I, just went there because... It... I had a mom and dad. No, I was, I was always straight. They kept me straight. Okay. I, I, I thank God for them. Okay. But no, no, I went there because of the photography program. Okay. And from there, again, only a student, you know, yeah. I, I got into the classroom, I recall, and um, my teacher's name was Bob Hall. You know, he was, he was like a clean-cut guy. You okay. Know. And he said, well, he had no classroom, really, so I had to study in the library. So first day of class, I went to the library. That's where we met. And um, he gave me a big stack of books. So I don't want to read these books. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give me a camera in my hand and mm -hmm. go out and shoot. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. But I had to study all these books he gave me. And basically, I learned about, you know, um, silver hydrates and the negatives and fixer, developer, and all that. So he wanted you to learn the theory of it before and you actually get that. the camera. I mastered it. Yeah. I, mean, I thank God for that. Because I said, oh, I'm going to read all these, all these books, big old pile of books. And um, it worked out. So that said that he wanted to be sure that you were ready for it and you really I wanted so. it. I guess so. I wanted that camera. Because, you know, if the books didn't deter you. I didn't have a camera in, like, what, a month or two after? I was like, wait, I almost been reading, reading, reading. Okay. He had Q&A me, you know. But um, it worked out. You know, I'm like, Was he of African descent? No, he wasn't. Okay. You know, his name was Bob Hall, you know, I guess I'm a Bob, Bob too, you know, Robert Maryland. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, he inspired me to fly too, I fly, you know, I mean. He what do you mean fly, me. you're a pilot? Yeah, fly okay. airplanes, you know, okay. small air, aircraft, of course. So we're going to come back to that because I see you have a lot of tricks in your bag in a positive <laughs> way. I wouldn't say tricks, talents. There you go. Talents, <laughs> people. Yeah, like both at yeah <laughs> talents. So that's lovely. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So d how about you? Did you have to go to school for yours, or you just learned it on the job as you went, um, Larry? Photography? Yeah. Well, like I said, in the beginning, it was just a hobby. Yeah. And then a lot of years went by. And then after we left Japan, we went to New York, and we came back to California. And when we got to California, I was trying to find something I could do that I was interested in. And uh, somehow it turned toward photography. I kept right. thinking, oh, I'd like to be a photographer, but 
I knew that took a lot of... And, and, and whether or not you can make a living off of it when you think of it, you know, yeah. so, yeah. You know, at first, I, I, I didn't think I could. So you know, did you go to school? Or yeah, I probably went to a school. Uh, after I started going to college, and I started, uh, I went to a school they had in, in the community. In Oak Park, it was called Fishback School of Photography. Fishback, Fishback School of and Photography. They had, they had uh, uh, Jalen Fishback started the school, and he knew a lot of famous photographers. And uh, so, but he had died just before I came there, so mm. his wife was running the school. And okay. They had very excellent photographers come in to show us stuff, right. and they had good teachers and stuff like that. So I just learned it little by little. Wow. You have to, well, it was like a, a, a school where you went for a year. And you came every five days a week to the class and stuff like that. And then, and then you spend all your spare time, you know, going around taking mm -hmm, pictures and mm -hmm. stuff, trying to learn the craft. Mm -hmm. and so that's what I well, did. Well, I, I must have to say, you know, I did a little photography myself, you know, in high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it was an elective. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I even worked in the dark room. And I thought, oh, but I didn't take it serious. I just thought, oh, just especially going in the dark room where you <laughs> have to get your eyes adjusted to the dark. But, you know, so to see that, you know, two of you gentlemen have made it a career, that, that's huge because, you know, especially we're from the, I know I could speak from the era of the 70s. That, that was my decade. <laughs> and, you know, the things that one was, was calling you, I, I, I can't say that I knew anyone that says I wanted to be a photographer. Mm. And so to well, see that you, not only that, but you made it a career. Go ahead. What no, I mean, I was going to say, why was that? That you didn't see nobody making that as a career? I mean, you're a young lady, and... Yeah. I mean, um, nobody was saying that? You're saying, like, in the late 70s or the 80s? Well, I guess it's how I grew up. My brothers, I came from a family with five brothers, and I was the only girl, and, you know, it was about, let's go low-riding. <laughs> <laughs> let's go cruising, you know? And so it was not like... But you had that career talent, driven. as long as you had that talent of uh, the art of photography, you had a, a talent. Not really. Really? Okay. No, no, I just took pictures when I went on vacation. It was just, you know, it was an elective. You know, back in those days, children had options. Young people had options. You know, food, wood shop, uh, you know, sewing. Those were the things I grew up right. with. Now uh -huh. it's like, you know, there's not much. They've taken that out of everything. So I think that's kind of changed it. But, Yeah. So. Well, I think what happened to me is that, you know, I was interested in a, a camera and shooting, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I didn't know how much detail it took to really become a photographer and all the stuff you'd have to learn and stuff like that. It just seemed like it was over my head. And I just, just wanted the camera, just wanted to be able to shoot with it. You know, I wanted the camera to do the work. And all I had to do was just point the camera <laughs> and point and shoot. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like but what I do now. <laughs> but after a while, you start realizing that that's not good There's enough. more to you know, it. You just get these little plain, simple shots and... Anybody can do that. Um, so later on, I decided, well, maybe I should go to school and try to learn it, you know? And I mean, a true photographer controls the lighting, you know, like controls if it's too bright, make it darker, right. depth of field. Again, you know, Larry, we both, you know, shoot manually, you know, and mm -hmm. we okay. control the lighting. That makes a big difference. Okay. And, and so that's when you came out of school. That means you were ready now to take on the profession of it. Or well, you were doing little things on the side. <laughs> Is there a time, you know, that you just say, okay, I'm a real photographer now because I've gone through school, I got that certificate or that degree, or you just, you know, you shot for people along the way? We shot for everybody. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, no, and I was going to say, I didn't feel like I was a photographer. <laughs> Even after I went to school, I didn't feel like I was a photographer. I'd say, all right, I'm ready to get out here and shoot. But, you know, I had learned a certain amount of things, and I said, well, I can give it a try, shot. You know, so I got out there and First thing that happened is uh, my cousin was getting ready to get married, and she said, hey, would you take pictures of our wedding? I was like, I said, no, the wedding is such a sacred thing. I don't, she said, no, please. She said, whatever you take, we'll be fine with, you know? Mm. So I shot her wedding, and, you know, it, it, most of the pictures turned out all right, but I was just lucky, because there's a lot of time when you try to shoot stuff, but when you're not sure about all the stuff you're supposed to know, and they don't come out so good. So it was like a hit and miss mm -hmm, thing in the mm -hmm. beginning, and you just... The more you do it, the more you experience things, the better you get at it. So, and it's like a way for to say basically that photography chose you. Well, you know, because yeah. you just probably did it because you, you liked it, and it, but it's not like you saying I'm going to go make a living on it. But when they 
assigned you a job to do for the family, that's when it started to show up that, well, let's call our cousin or our uncle because he knows it. Mm -hmm. would, that, would you say it's the same for you too? Well, uh, um, oh God, I just went blank, you guys. <laughs> you cut this right quick. Yeah, this no, right it's... Um, my, my thing is, um, like Larry said, so back then we didn't have digital cameras. We shot film, so you can't have no previews. You can't check this, check that. You gotta know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. This isn't gonna come out. I came out with confidence because I, again, I was book I had to read, you know, I, I studied and... And I, you really wanted to be a photographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I had a dream, I know it's going to sound kind of weird, I was photographing Ronald Reagan. You had a dream that you... Yeah, were... I was going to photograph Ronald Reagan, I'm going to say shoot, but photograph Ronald Reagan. <laughs> and, um, oh, I guess you could say that now since he's gone, no. Well, <laughs> I'm kidding. Watch out. going to shoot no. him with the, a camera. Well, my thing is that, that dream came to pass because November 4th, 1984, mm. I was at the state capitol and hitting Ronald Reagan up here and I shot his pictures. I was wow. in college then and, and it, it came to pass and that really started me going really. So that was your big first catch was uh, catching uh, 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 well, no, my first president uh, Well, that was one of them. That was 1984. But 1982, my, my first assignment with the Observer, yeah. was, I, was, I had photographed uh, Mary Wells, uh, Roddy Lee. I guess this photographer didn't show up in the Observer newspaper. Mm -hmm. And he's seeing, you know, a young man with a camera. He said, hey, hey, why don't you shoot with the Observer? Like, I said, what's the Observer? I didn't know what it was. <laughs> you know, I grew up a different side of town. And sure enough, um, I shot Mary Wells for the Observer, my first assignment, summer of 1982. And I, so I, that's when you got on with I the got Observer? Out with the Observer. Okay, yeah. I was going to yeah. ask when you started because you said over 40 years. So, 1982. I was right out of high school. So, yeah, I, I was, was going to say, you were really, really young then. Well, yeah, I got on, well, I really started full-time in 84. I was out okay. of college then, and um, I went to American River College, which I shouldn't give them no credit, but, um, <laughs> I mean, because, again, when I got started in high school, my 10th and 11th grade, mm -hmm. I was learning the art of photography. In my 12th year, I think I've mentioned to you before, I taught the, the class, you know. You taught the class. Right, right, on my 12th year. And then I went to college. You know, everybody will go to college. That's right. But Aubrey Stone, who's gone now, he's a good friend of ours, um, he said, college is not for everybody. Because all the work I put in in photography I, 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 is considered, I, I think, a master's degree. All the years I put in. Right. Doing the dark room, doing the studio and all that. Right. I mean, I did that at my mom and dad's house. That's right. why I thank God for them, because they opened the door, gave me their garage for a studio, and I built a dark room in my bedroom, and I give them all the credit for, I guess, to combine me on that. Right, right. But again, when I went to college, though, um, you know, you go to college, go see a counselor, first thing you do, mm -hmm. and um, it was a Oriental gentleman, and he kind of um, told me, no, you don't want to be a photographer, you want to do something else. Hmm. And I'm like, well, wow, okay. So that's the last time I went, ever went to go see him again, you know. And yeah. you already came in with experience because you have been yeah, doing it yeah, for, but wow. Some people stereotype people, you know. Yes. It's really sad, but um, my thing is, So again, he tried to deter you from it. Right. Go we'll get a job at an auto mechanic store or, you know, something like that, you know, at a Walmart or something like that. I knew I wanted to be a professional photographer, really, you know. I have to pause you right there, audience, okay. because, you know, audience, I'm speaking to you now. And I've heard that a lot, you know, when a young person have passion for something and want to do it, the teachers and the people that are there supposed to guide them are the ones that talk them that they want to put you say, no, you, you probably want to work in a, uh, as a maintenance person. You want to do this or, or that. But 40 years later, he's mastered it. So to those that are listening out there, you know, please, Remember that sometimes people don't have your good in mind, even if they're there to teach you. So if your passion is your passion, you're going to push through no matter what. Listen to the internal voice. So thank you for sharing that. That's real important. Now you have part one of the Observer Photographer speaking. Um, I would like you to uh, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave a comment, share, and be sure to catch part two will be coming up. Thank you all for patronizing the show and bless up. So now you know, it's time to grow at Let's Talk and Grow with Ms. Rushumba. Let the healing begin.